Hello and welcome back to CS4010. In this tutorial, we are going to study the vibration of a single mast. So if you have a free vibration, so in general, you don't have any additional force. So you have the elastic force equal to the inertia force. So we have minus Kh, where Kx is the stiffness of the attached springs or any other elastic material times by U, where U is the position, equal to the mass times by the accelerations. So you know it very well from the uh, Hooke law and the Newton law. Now, in general, a vibration of a single mass is described by a system of equations like this. So in the first one is the force equilibrium, and the second and the third, they are the boundary condition or the initial position and velocity of the mass. Uh, Mathematics has shown this one for us. So the exact solution for this system of equations is ut, where t is a time uh, variable. Uh, position is a function of time. And it is equal to the amplitude time by cosine of omega t where omega is the angular velocity of the vibrations. Uh, you also can do it uh, numerically by using the finite difference method. So we try to solve the second derivatives of the positions by using the approximations. Uh, you have it from the lecture. And based on this equation, we can rearrange to calculate uh, the next positions based on the current position and the position in the past. Um, so in the first step, uh, I need to set up the parameter. So the vibrations uh, simulation has a lot of parameter. I set up the time parameter first. So I have Tf, which is my final time equal to 10 seconds. So this is my time of simulations. And my time step, I get it to about 10 milliseconds. So I will have about uh, 1000 calculation step here. So this will be my time step. And the mass of the object, uh, for example, I set it to one kilogram. My amplitude, I set it to 1. It's just a default number. You can change it if you want to. Uh, and this will be my amplitude of free vibration. And then uh, the stiffness of the string or any elastic material, I set it to 1 Newton per meter. And now I set a timer for my simulation. So the timer will tell me which time step I am at. And I need to create a figure to plot the data out. And hold on uh, because I want to keep all data for new plot and I fix the view so I have my view will start from 0 to TF so my X will start from 0 and it goes to TF now for my Y limits uh, I set it to from minus 1.5 times by the amplitude to Mm, 2.5 times by the amplitude. So I fix the view. Uh, I could explain it a little bit. So actually, I just need it goes from minus a to plus a. 
but I also want to have a little bit extra distance for a clear graph and I also want to plot the exact solution uh, so therefore I need it goes to 2.5 of A uh, you can see it later on the graph so now I just plot the initial positions of the mass so the zero time it is at the amplitude u equal to a and, and ro for the light style so r stand for red and o stand for circle marker and i specify my marker style my marker size i set it to six and my marker face color I set it to blue so to be in contrast and maybe this is for me so I plot the initial point now in next step I try to calculate uh, the first step because you know to uh, do the finite difference method we need the current step and the step before this so we need at least two steps to calculate and then we can loop over and over again so we have only one step so I try to calculate the first step by approximation so I assume that in that time we have the same uh, acceleration so my I have my x after equal to a minus one half time by dt square time by cut over m time by a so I assume that we have the same velocity we don't have any change in this one so will we uh, calculate first position yep and now because I already have the the next position so I get my x equal to uh, x before equal to a and I can try to calculate x after again and again with my current x and my x before okay now I just start the y loop uh, and this y will go for until it is equal or larger uh, the final time loop until the final time and in the loop the first command I need to that I have to tell the computer that I'm moving to the next step so time equal to time plus the time step So my timer will be added every loop and I have my x equal to uh, x after okay so now I set my current position to the position I just calculated and now I can plot the time and the x and RO marker size is 6 uh, and my marker face color is blue as I did before okay so I plot the position I just calculated and now I can just do the time stamp so my title uh, is going to be time equal to uh, the value of timer so it should be num to string so this will convert the number time to a type of string so it can be plot out and 
variable time and then I add up at the end the second for the unit for example like this so this will be my title so set the timestamp okay and then now I after I have plotted it I have to calculate the next position so I have my x after equal to so I have used my finite difference method equation uh, which is this equation so 2 times by the current position minus previous position minus delta t square times by kx over m times by current position so this one should be 2 times by x minus x before minus dt square uh, times by k divided by m and times by x so I calculate the next position and then I think I may want to pause for a dt because you know why I need to pause if I don't pause the plot will be very fast and I don't see it moving you can set it to for example 0 0.9 of dt but for me uh, when the computer is fast enough I just pause for dt and let's see uh, I need to set x before equal to the current position because I have moved to the next step so I prepare for the next step and here I pause to see the movement now uh, let's see the plotting of this vibration so now you can see here is the plot of the vibration so it go down and go up uh, the y coordinate is the vibration the distance and the x coordinate is a time so it goes from 0 to 10 seconds mm -hmm. yep so this is uh, the predictions my simulation of the vibrations if i know the initial position and the initial velocity and own a parameter of the elastic system now i want to check the accuracy of my simulation it doesn't make any sense if the prediction is wrong so I need to plot out the exact solution uh, okay so I actually can delete this one because I will plot it anyway and it's just only one small time step now in here um, beside plotting the simulation I also plot out the um, exact solution so it will be a times by cosine of the omega which is k on m square root and time by time and I have my uh, lifestyle is blue circle and I have my marker sign uh, please do not mess up with the capitalized uh, letters because it's a keyword of the MATLAB so it should be 6 marker face color should be red so to be in contrast okay but if I plot this way, it will plot exactly at the simulation I just plotted before. So therefore, I would like to add up uh, an A, so it can plot uh, A higher. Now, let's see if it works. So, here is my exact solution and here is my um, predictions and I think they are really uh, coincident
you can see this. And I set uh, the point to be blue, so I can highlight the current uh, positions of the vibration. Yep, I think it's match. Uh, if I store the data, I can compare it, but I just quickly change a little bit. So I just delete this one to see if they really coincident. Let's see. It. So you see now I couldn't see the other one because they are all in the one place. Yep. Uh, thank you very, very much for your attention and you can uh, improve it, extend your knowledge to something like damp vibrations or vibration with force. Uh, see you in the next tutorial.